intro? Okay. This is uh, Martin and Alex from Question Defense. Um, they do a lot of stuff with password uh, cracking, and uh, they actually were on the team, uh, Team Hashcat, that won the recent uh, DEF CON uh, hash cracking challenge. Um, so they are very well qualified to speak on this. Um, also, uh, Martin goes by the name Pure Hate Online and is one of the backtrack for uh, on the backtrack for development team. And Alex, well, <laughs> Alex is just our buddy. That's right. He's your buddy. Don't touch All right. So um, since Adrian did such a good um, job of uh, intro to password cracking and kinds of hashes and that kind of thing. Obviously, I'm having a lot of technical difficulties here, but so what we're going to talk about is um, this new tool called Hashcat, and uh, this is basically just uh, who am I? Developed for Backtrack. Um, I have a little IT store over in Louisville called Computer Rehab, and uh, uh, me and Alex, like Adrian said, have a website called Question Defense. Um, it's got two parts. One part we blog about technical articles, um, anything from really simple to really complicated. Um, we don't care if there's a question, we'll answer it. And uh, I'm also obviously a security enthusiast. And uh, Alex, <laughs> technology consultant. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> I wanted to put classified, but he wouldn't let me. <laughs> anyway, so this is my disclaimer. Um, we do not crack passwords for a living. Um, we don't claim to be experts. Um, we did not also write Hashcat. Um, the thing about Hashcat is the guy that wrote it is German, and he doesn't speak English very well. Um, he's gotten to be a really good friend of ours, and uh, his tool wasn't really well known. We discovered it, and uh, we've been really promoting it because we think it takes password cracking to the next level, which um, hopefully if the network holds up, we're going to attempt to show you that. And um, Adrian was talking about the documentation earlier for Hashcat. That's actually going to change. Alex is uh, helping Adam rewrite all the documentation for Hashcat in uh, – English so that it will be easier to understand. It's not that Adam doesn't want to, it's just that he's not um, the best English speaker. Yeah, he um, probably doesn't care. Probably doesn't care either. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have been known to be wrong, and uh, oh. we're just a couple of geeks that are happen to get excited by cracking password hashes. So, a question defense. You only describe one part. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a second part of Question Defense, which is tools.questiondefense.com, which is um, our series of uh, online hash cracking tools that we've put up. Um, they're not free. They do cost a little bit of money. The reason they cost money is because um, we have um, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars invested in hardware and hosting and electricity and all that kind of stuff. Um, Right now, I think I have a slide about it later, but right now we support WPA captures, NTLM, MD5, MD4, SHA1, and also RAR protected password files. Um, basically, you upload it, you make a little payment, you get an email a little while later with the results. Um, it's actually going, it's undergoing an entire overhaul right now, switching from NVIDIA's CUDA architecture to the OpenCL architecture. But um, it, it won't be down, but just so you know that. So, a little bit about passwords. The reason they're so important is um, still to this date, passwords are the primary method of user authentication on the network. And um, as a result of that, it's also the weakest link in the network because as anybody that works in IT knows, uh, you can put all the defenses and firewalls and anything into place, but if you get, let your users choose their own passwords, you're going to um, get owned. And uh, another reason that cracking passwords is, I made this presentation in one day, by the way, so if anybody has any critiques later, uh, it, it could be better, but I'm going to do the best I can. But So another reason is the admin passwords. Um, anybody that's ever uh, worked on pen testing a network will know that Generally, the administrator will use the exact same password across the entire network. So if you can get one administrator password, generally you own every single box. And um, back in the Metasploit class, me and uh, Relic actually showed how that works. Metasploit actually has a module, the SMB module, where it, when you capture the hash of one password, it's actually only a Metasploit Express, um, which is the paid version. But once you capture 
the SMB challenge, you can put that back in Metasploit and you can basically auto, auto attack the entire network and it will log you into every single box that has that same SMB authentication. And uh, Dave one time was playing around at his work with that and uh, he actually had 600 shells at one time uh, on his computer. So, and, and that's at a Fortune 1000 company. So you can just imagine how many companies actually. They like do denial that. of the services on box. <laughs> when you're in management, you can do that. All right. So, let's we'll talk about what's new in password cracking. Um, Adrian demoed some tools uh, for password cracking. Um, I'm not so much focused on the. Um, browser and that kind of stuff. Uh, basically, uh, what we're going to focus on today is hashes, uh, MD5, um, primarily, but you can, um, as long as Hashcat supports the algorithm, you can input whatever hash you want. I basically just use MD5s for the demos because they're the most common. Um, almost every single form still uses MD5 encryption, and, um, and lists of MD5s to crack are easy to get. Um, so some of the new stuff in password cracking is, is um, as I'm sure some people are aware, is GPU-based password cracking, which is um, utilizing the GPU cores to uh, crack passwords. The reason that works is because password cracking, the more threads it has, the more it can do. So if you have one core, you can have one thread. If you have four cores, you can have four threads. If you have... Uh, SSE2 code, you can have eight threads. If you have, for example, a NVIDIA 295 GTX, which has 160 cores, you can have 160 threads going on. So you can kind of do the math there, and uh, we're going to attempt to show that off in a minute. Um, something else that's new with Hashcat is um, there's a much more complex rule set which you are able to make. If anyone's familiar with the rules in John, um, Basically, what you can do is you can create a rule that says, you know, take, you can basically create a rule to do anything to the word. So in the most simplistic of the rule, you would say, take every word, capitalize the first letter, and append, you know, a date to the end of it. For example, that would be a rule. And so you would, you would run that rule with your password list against a list of hashes, um, and hopefully you would come up with some more passwords since a lot of people do their name and the date or their name and the date they were born or something like that. And uh, so what goes along with that, which I'm also going to try to show later live hopefully, is the pattern detection software that um, Adam from Hashcat wrote, which basically takes the same concept of John rules, but it, um, it fine-tunes it. And it actually... Um, parses an existing word list for the words and then creates patterns based on um, based on what Adam has seen in years and years and years of password cracking. So basically every time they crack a list of passwords, they parse it for patterns and then they keep those patterns and then eventually he had enough patterns that he was able to code this dictionary expander to, uh, to show off the patterns. And uh, also, um, most new password crackers. John recently got SSE2 code, um, so it's a little bit faster than it was, but for the most part, um, password crackers on the CPUs um, don't use SSE2. I'm pretty sure that Inside Pros does, um, Hashcat obviously does, John does now. Um, I'm not aware of too many others, but I I'm sure there's some, and like I said, I've been known to be wrong. But I, I have a graph I'll show you in just a minute where even um, against uh, password crackers with SSE2 code, Hashcat is significantly faster just on the CPU. Um, distributing cracking is new. I'm not going to go into that, but basically what that means is harnessing a whole bunch of CPUs together to do the work. Um, I used to be into that, but ever since GPU cracking came around, um, I, can basically, I can basically do the same thing on one box uh, with my four GPU cards as a distributed cracker with about 400 CPUs could do, modern day CPUs. Um, and uh, also new, I just threw that in there, there's a lot of new online hash lookup websites springing up all over the place um, with, with the space, you know, terabytes and terabytes of space are getting cheaper and cheaper, and so people are putting up those kind of websites all over the place. Um, so it's fairly easy to take a hash and look it up uh, on a couple of different sites before you even attempt to crack it and waste your CPU cycles. All right, so 
what this all means is that um, patterns that were once or passwords that were once considered secure are no longer secure. Passwords that are hashed without being salted are almost a joke, like <laughs> NTLM. And uh, anything under 12 characters is um, fairly easily broken. So this is what I consider the old school attack. Kane is not bad software. It does a lot of cool stuff. However, for attacking the hash itself, it's uh, fairly archaic. It, it does a brute force, but as you can see from my slide, just note this, it does about 6 million passwords per second. So, and that's on a uh, Core 2 processor where I took that, a modern day Core 2 processor. And uh, another old school is John the Ripper. Um, John the Ripper even has a jumbo patch to um, add the SSE2 code, and or maybe it's in there by default, I'm not sure, but the jumbo patch adds about 40 different other, um, other uh, algorithms which John can crack. It's still a great tool. Um, I don't specifically, personally use it for password cracking. I do use the mangling feature and the rules feature sometimes to create word lists, but I use those word lists with other software. But So nothing against John. And so, once again, um, although John the Ripper and Kane are good password crackers, they don't have a lot of the features that Hashcat does. Um, the combination attack, the hybrid attack, and the speed characteristics of Hashcat. And OCL Hashcat is the GPU-based version. So there's Hashcat and OCL Hashcat, and they both, I'll get into the features in a minute. All right, so if you want to get the tools that I'm using in this demo, um, the first one's Hashcat, which... Uh, there's a Windows binary and a Linux binary in both of these. There's actually a Hashcat GUI, which only works on Windows, and uh, that's what I'll show for Windows. Um, OCL Hashcat. Oh, I didn't put OCL Hashcat on it, but that, this, that zip file you know, body does have Hashcat in it. You have to unzip, unzip the raw file, so if you have 7-zip, you should have no problem doing that, but go ahead. All right, and then so OCL Hashcat, which obviously you have to have OpenCL. Um, just real quick, all OpenCL is is the implementation to kind of unify NVIDIA and uh, ATI um, GPU drivers. It used to be CUDA and Stream, and everybody wanted something that worked cross-platform, and so OpenCL was born. And uh, OpenCL should work with either the newest Stream drivers or the newest CUDA drivers. It's built into both of those. Um, and then at the bottom is the, um, the kind of the new stuff that Adam wrote. He actually just put this out. It's the Hashcat Utilities. This is where the dictionary expander that I'll show will be. All right. Since we only have an hour, it's going to be impossible to show all the features of Hashcat and OCL Hashcat, but I'm going to try to show a few of the highlights. And if anybody has any questions after, um, they can definitely uh, ask me or ask Alex and also... Hashcat has a form, and they also have an IRC channel on the Ryzen network. All right, so the main features of Hashcat, obviously, are it's free, it's multi-threaded, it, so that means that it takes advantage of your entire CPU. It's multi-hash. You can load thousands upon thousands of hashes uh, in there. I think during the competition at DEF CON, we were loading four and 5,000 hashes at a time, no problem. Runs on Linux and Windows. It's uh, definitely the fastest CPU-based multi-hash cracker. It's SSE2 accelerated. Um, almost all the rules are compatible with John and Passwords Pro. Passwords Pro is the software that's put out by that site Adrian went to earlier called Inside Pro with the hash generator. Um, it's actually really good software too, but it does cost 100 or 200 or something dollars. Um, and it's only Windows based. But just to not say that their software sucks, they were the second place team at the DEF CON, um, at the DEF CON password cracking contest. So it is good software. It's uh, possible to resume or limit the, limit the session. It automatically recognizes recovered hashes. Um, it can automatically generate random rules. Um, so if you don't know how to write your own rules, you can generate random rules. Um, it can work distributed. Um, you can specify multiple word lists. This is a really cool feature. Um, uh, to this date, most password crackers, you either had to um, do one list at a time or you had to combine all the words into one list or something. And uh, Hashcat easily allows you to specify either a directory of lists or a couple of lists. Or, and in the, in the GUI interface, it's really nice, just little checkboxes for what list you want. 
And uh, the number of threads can be configured. So if you want a password crack in the background and you only want to use one of your cores, you can do that.